Hey y'all, it's me Kip from Stoned Appetit. I'm coming to you today with episode one of a new series presented by Mile High Life called The High Five. We're gonna travel around Colorado and find all the best food, party, music, smoke, anything that this great state has to offer, we're on the hunt to find it. Join me as we start with episode one in Colorado wine country. Yee Our first stop in Colorado wine country was downtown Grand Junction. It actually kind of reminds me of like a quaint middle-class Boulder Pearl Street with boutiques, shops, restaurants, and bars, which led us to go find our friend Chef Josh Nirenberg and his dank-ass restaurants, Taco Party, and Ben 707. So this is the most upscale of tacoing you can do. What made you want to turn like such a fun and casual thing like guacamole, avocado, and tacos into something so gorgeous? We ran ourselves into a hole with this. We opened a restaurant that was regionally influenced seasonal American against this wall of flavors, it was like, I want to put this on the menu, but it just doesn't have a place on the menu. I want to put this on the menu, you know, I want to play chili, I want to do blue corn and hominy and masa and all these other things that are totally prevalent and regionally appropriate. I'll have sex with that meat right now. This is uh, our hot fried chicken taco version 3.5. 12 or whatever we're on right now. Very secretive recipe. Well, we won't tell anybody, uh, yeah. except for our friends yeah. on YouTube and OnlyFans. Yeah. All right, we're coming to y'all from Taco Party for the coveted. Y'all know I'm going for fucking fried chicken no matter where I am every single time. Here we have a hot fried chicken with a little coupon mayo crema on top and a little sexy sauce, as we're going to call it. Stay tuned for the bite. That chicken, it's like a hot fried chicken. You can taste it, so it's got actual flavor to it. That's very nice. The cabbage is a very big bonus. Adds a little bit of zest and liveliness to it. The tortilla is my favorite fucking part. You don't even know it's there. It's like edible underwear. You can just munch that shit all day. Goodness gracious. These are bangers, bangers. One of the great things about downtown Grand Junction is you're just a hop, skip, and a jump from another dank meal. We followed the path and went down the street to the other restaurant of Josh's, Ben 707 Food Bar, which is actually a lively little location that's known for their burgers, but we teed off a different fashion with Natty Wines and Omakasa style dining. So Chef Josh and Chef Ryan have an unreal menu over here using regionally sourced ingredients, channeling the flavors of the seasons. It's fucking awesome. As you can see, Ben 707 was my favorite spot we visited all weekend. This omakase style dinner fucks so hard. The chicken liver mousse, that shit slaps. The salmon, it was so juicy. But this was the bell of the ball. So this is that bow and arrow blue corn that I was talking about. This is that blue corn done as hominy. So it is the next to mall that's not been ground. So it's been treated as lye and then rinsed and then cooked. So it is quite literally for solo. There's a green chili hue. There is roasted green chili marmalade to season the, the whole thing. Um, Plain of that corn, we're garnishing that with popcorn for some texture, some popcorn shoots. And then the pork itself is a smoked porchetta that we do in house. Um, the porchetta is stuffed with a pork tenderloin. The whole thing is cured, then smoked, then roasted. After feeling full as a tick on a dog's back, I was tied, bound, and gagged. But that meant that we could get up early for a day of active drinking. We started off at Palisade Cycle to grab our bikes and hit the road for our first vineyard. Stop one. Our first stop was Col Terrace Vineyards. It was a delightful little vineyard. If you didn't happen to book the horseback wine tours, fret not. You can always just hijack or jump on the end of somebody else's tour and take a view of Buffalo Bill's basement where they keep all the wine. So we'll say medium toast. So that is primarily at that level give a vanilla note. 
and if you toast it to a darker toast level, that changes the wood chemistry and you change that flavor that you're getting. So that, that vanilla might turn butterscotch perhaps. Um, again, vanilla is one of the primary spice notes you get out of a barrel. After hijacking somebody else's wine tour, we really drank ourselves an appetite and we wanted to find some of the better eats in town. The snack over at Ordinary Fellow Winery is a delight. They're really elevating the casual food, especially from a food truck, whether it be the sausage patty melt, the fresh ingredient vinaigrette salad, or the rillettes that were a banger. You really can't go wrong no matter what you order from this tag team duo, both behind the bar and in the kitchen. Two tastings down, two to go, roughly about eight glasses of wine and a delectable lunch from a snack. But now it's time for our favorite one, Salvage. They do a little bit more of the natural fermentation process. You can find them along the front range as well, but let's fucking party. We're in the uh, Vinelands, which is the premier red grape growing area. As you can see, the Grand Mesa up there. We've got the Book Cliffs, that's Mount Lincoln, that's Mount Garfield over there. You're catching that solar radiation. We're at the mouth of the Debec Canyon. That's that canyon you rolled in uh, on your way here. And that affords that, that wind flow, especially great in the winter to blow out that cold air inversion, allows us to grow these red grapes right here. Yeah. All right, what are we sipping on? Um, it's mostly gonna be uh, Aromella, Vignoles. Uh, there's oh, never mind, we don't know what the fuck that is. You can just go ahead and pour it. This is my favorite. So we this got is the one that that, that magenta. Magenta, it's its own style that we concocted. Essentially, it's a skin contacted, uh, skin contact rosé. Uh, mostly Marquette. It's another American varietal. Very popular in the Midwest, Iowa. It's Michigan's go-to grape. Ironically, that's where the school or university, Marquette, it's over there, isn't it? I believe so. Oh, yeah, look yeah, at yeah. that. Yeah. Fun fact for our sports listeners. Yeah. Well, cheers. Thanks again, Pat. We appreciate you having us out. That's Sal, our Sauvage Spectrum right out of Palisades, Colorado. Look it up right here. Yeah. And you can see where to find all these locations. Great wine, great people. Let's have a great time. Cheers. Seven hours of whining are done, but the best part about it is while we only just broached the fucking surface, there's 40 plus vineyards and opportunities out here to sample different wines from not only the region, but also people that are creating great products from other regions as well. To get the opportunity, I'd recommend Palisade thoroughly. Grand Junction, food is a fucking banger. The wine in Palisade, the vibe in Palisade, exceptional. We had a blast. Definitely worth checking out. Pesh is highly regarded as one of the best restaurants along the Western Slope, and it delivered in spades. From bread to the cocktails, I feel like Tom Selleck, and that tastes wonderful. All the way down to all the lambs and anchos we can enjoy. There was something for everybody. It's a thoroughly great experience and a great way to cap off a day of drinking vino in the valley.